Well, good morning, Canyon Springs. Would you stand with me, please? And welcome Facebook friends and brothers and sisters in Christ. We're glad you took time out of your day to worship with us. And our first song, we're still a little bit of Christmas. We're not that far away. Angels We Have Heard on High, page 278. Singing on its way to 
world revolved from night to day, a voice, a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth. And 294, and this is one of Al's favorite songs, One Day. One day when heaven was filled with his praise, one day when sin was as black as can Sing it out. Living, he loved me. 
dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever, one day he's coming, oh glorious day. Did very well. Thank you. you. May be seated. All right. Great to have each and every one of you today. And we trust that you had a wonderful Christmas yesterday. And it is the day after Christmas, the 26th of December today. We got a few short days left in the year 2021. And uh, this year has uh, come, and uh, it seems to be. Uh, following the pattern of year after year after year, it will go also. And uh, so let's look forward to what the Lord might have for us this next year. Uh, a couple of prayer requests, and we're going to have a word of prayer on our children. Uh, if you'd like to avail yourselves of the junior church time, they can be dismissed at this time. And uh, for the junior church, feel free to do that. Uh, but uh, we're going to have a word of prayer in just a second, a special. We'll dive into God's word this morning. I want to make mention of a couple of prayer requests that uh, were mentioned. Uh, be praying for Janet. Janet, um, you know Janet. Janet Stagg says she, uh, on Christmas, flew back up to Washington to be with her sister, um, who is battling cancer. And so it's a serious matter. And so would you be praying for Janet as she's in Washington State as we speak, ministering to her family and being with her sister to pray for comfort and grace and all those kinds of things that are going on there with Janet, okay? So be thinking about those kinds of things. All right. What are some of the things going on? Well, you know, uh, the year is going to be ending, and uh, praise the Lord, uh, the giving has been faithful uh, throughout the year, and uh, we are uh, praying about and praying about embarking on a, uh, an opportunity to uh, take care of the Lord's house in certain ways. We're thinking about upgrading some of the... You know, the paint and the chairs, some of the carpet. The carpet's been here for a while, so would you be praying about that? In fact, uh, we just got in the mail some some gifts for that project. Uh, and if you want to give towards that project, that is quite the blessing. And uh, you could just go ahead and mark on your offering envelope, building and grounds there, or building fun, and that'll get to the right place. Uh, this year, we'll probably be uh, updating um, our windows on the outside there. And uh, they're 30-some years old, single pane. We're going to get some insulated ones, all those kind of things. And uh, we're going to be uh, getting new doors, new doors. Uh, uh, we've been duct taping the doors together, and so it's time. And uh, so we're going to be getting new doors this year. And uh, we're, gonna, we're working on these projects because we, we love the Lord, we want to honor Him, and we want uh, God's house to be uh, a nice, beautiful blessing and a place where we worship together in comfort and thanksgiving. So be mindful of those kinds of things. Some of those are going on, uh, but be faithful in that area of your giving. Let's have a word of prayer, and then we will be in Matthew chapter 2 and Malachi chapter 1 through 4. We'll be in that today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you, and we're just so mindful of your goodness. We think about the celebrations that we've had this week of Christmas Eve and Christmas and celebrating your birth and what it means, and thank you for that great gift, Lord. And I pray that we would uh, just continue uh, each and every day, uh, Lord, as you have blessed us with so many blessings in life. Thank you for one another. Thank you for these folks. Thank you for our friends and our family members. We think of Janet today, and uh, as she ministers to her sister, would you give grace and strength and uh, help in that time of need there. Lord, uh, we're just mindful of people that are hurting. We think of the St. Denny family and we think of some of these that are just um, just struggling, uh, having some loss and experiencing loss and heartache. And we ask, Lord, that you would encourage them and bring grace and comfort into their lives. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this opportunity. And Lord, thank you for that, the wonderful opportunity we have to be a giving person here. Thank you for our people who are faithful at their giving. Bless the offering, Lord, in your, in your name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you give online or out there in the box. Go ahead.
Today and uh, appreciate that. Uh, we always find it a, a real privilege that you would choose to visit and be with us this morning. And I know we've got a lot of friends and family watching online and spending time around the Word this morning, wherever they're at. And God bless you for doing that. Uh, let us know in the comment section there that you're with us. Appreciate that. It's, uh, it's a good thing to be here today. Oh. Matthew chapter number 2. And uh, I want to draw your attention, if you will, to verse number 8. <clears throat> and I want you to think about the wise men for just a second. And of course, we're, we're going to be in a different place. And so let's just kind of think about this just for a little bit. Look at these wise men. In verse 8, it says that he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently the young child. And when you had found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him. This was the conversation they had with Herod. In verse number 9, And when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. We've talked about the wise men, their journey, their perseverance, uh, the, the hurdle hopping that they had to do to get to the manger to get to where Jesus was. And, and they made it. They followed the star. God provided direction for them. And they made it so that the Lord Jesus would get that worship in verse number 11. Look, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts. Gold and frankincense and myrrh, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Notice that phrase, another way. They departed another way. Now, these were wise men, they came for a very important purpose of worshiping, uh, opening of their heart, their treasures, and giving gifts to the Lord. Obviously, the Lord needed that in just a little bit. We see him fleeing, Joseph and Mary and him, down to Egypt, and then coming back, of course, and those gifts were important for that process of that travel. But we see that these wise men, when they were worshipped in verse 11, they were warned of God, and they departed into their own country, another way they went a different way than they came they didn't go the same way they went a different way uh, I, I think uh if you will the wise men here experienced christmas i mean a great christmas with jesus who is the author and the finisher of all of our faith who is the beginning and the end the alpha and the omega who is the reason for the season if you will they got to experience that christmas and guess what they did? 
when they departed, verse 12, they went a different way. I submit to you, they were different. Wouldn't you agree that this experience with Jesus, do you think they were the same? Or do you think they were different? I kind of sometimes think about these things. I think they were different because of the gift of Jesus. What was that gift? The gift that God would become incarnate, if you will, and dwell among men and become flesh and to be worshipped here on earth. Boy, that was a gift. We opened up some gifts yesterday. The paper was flying. Amen. That's a good Christmas. A lot of things to rejoice. A lot of blessings to give. A lot of thanksgiving Back to the Lord. But one of the things we did do is we made sure we worshiped the Lord. And honored him on that day. It was his birthday. It was his day. It was, if you will, that day is just a memorial of what Jesus did for us. How he came and dwelt and lived and suffered and bled and died and was buried and rose again the third day. That is what we worship now i think they were different because of jesus i think they were different because of that worship i think they were different because they opened up their treasures in verse 11 it says and they fell down they worshiped and they opened their treasures this was their giving they presented unto him gifts they gave something to the lord they were different in that way you know, I want to encourage you. I know it's the day after Christmas, and uh, I, I know what that means. Maybe a busy schedule, some travel, some time, and we're tired today. We might be exhausted. You say, not me, preacher. Okay, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Okay. Uh, you know, so w- w- we, we understand that this is after Christmas, And for some, they have the after Christmas blues. We work, work, work and and prioritize and celebrate. And and now it's, huh. But these wise men, when they left, they departed another way. I submit to you, they were different. They were wise. They gave. And notice what happened because they gave. They gave. They gave. What, what happened? What is the result of their giving? They came and they worshipped, but when they worshipped, they gave. And because of that, what did they receive? I submit to you, they received a blessing. Look at what it says here in verse number 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed. So what did they receive? They received a blessing. And this blessing was in the form of a warning. You see, they came and found Jesus because they followed the star. They went exactly as God wanted them to go and find the star. And when God says, I don't want you to go the same way, they went a different way. And they got a warning, don't expect To go the same way. I want you to be different. I want you to go a different way. And I want when you, and, and because I'm here to protect you. Now I know what we do in our modern Christian thought here is that when somebody corrects me, when somebody rebukes me, when someone corrects me, when somebody gives me some admonishment, when someone kind of disagrees with me, you know what we say? I don't like that warning. I don't like that. But here, listen, this was a warning given to the wise men so that they would go a different way. And really, the warning was really God's provision for them. It was God's direction for them. It was God's providence for them. It was the way that God was going to get them where they wanted to go, go home, if you will. It's all because... They gave. They went another way. They were different. They gave. Now, you and I, we're going to depart here. It's after Christmas. We had a big Christmas day on Saturday and 
Friday had a wonderful Christmas Eve service, and we, we, we've been cookied out. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I've had enough cookies. I know, it shows. I feel it. I feel slow. I, I feel like I, uh, you know, I usually I feel like a cheetah. You know, I'm just fast and quick. Maybe I'm a little kitty cat now. I don't know, but I don't feel like that now. Yeah. Hey, the wise men got a warning in a dream, buddy. Okay, okay. So here they were. They went and they were different. And they departed this Christmas with this amazing experience. And one of the things that they did was they give gifts. And I believe that because they gave gifts, God blessed them with God's providential direction on what way to go in life. Are we all on the same page? Okay. Let's go over to Malachi. So guess what? This is really easy. Just go to the left. It's one book left. Now, you're in the New Testament. You're going to go to the Old Testament. In fact, you can go to the end of the Old Testament and find your way there to the first chapter there in the book of Malachi. My attempt is to help us understand how, how you and I can be blessed after Christmas, because I'll be honest with you. I don't know how I could top this, but I, I think I say that every year, but I'm blessed. I mean, I am blessed. I want to thank you for the cards and the, the gifts and some of the thoughts, uh, some, some of the kind words. And, man, I'm blessed. I'm over, I mean, I don't know how it could be better. It was great to have all my girls together. It was great to experience uh, wonderful things and have family. And t- These things are amazing. And I, I'm just so thankful for that. And for me, it's such a blessing. I don't want that blessing. I, I don't want that feeling or I don't want that experience of me having that blessing uh, just to be go away, if you will, just because it's the day after Christmas. How to be blessed after Christmas, I guess. Malachi is an interesting book. The Bible tells us in verse number one that the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel. So this was. Some message that God wanted to give Israel at this time, and it was a burden, meaning it was something that needed to be said. It was something that was on the heart of God and through Malachi. We don't know much about Malachi. We don't know who he was, when he was. We, we, we can gather that he was a prophet called prophet of God, of course, during the time maybe of Nehemiah, where Nehemiah was building the wall and Ezra was building the temple and these types of things. And, but this here, Malachi book, this book, if you will, is a time where the nation of Israel is resettling Jerusalem. They were carried away into Babylon. Now, because of Cyrus, they could build that temple, build that wall and, and have worship again. And uh, so all the Jews uh, that signed up to go back to Jerusalem, they're back in this town and they're striving to honor God with their lives. That meant temple, the Levites, the priests, sacrifices. They're trying to get their country back. You see, because of their stiff neckness, because of their sin, because of their rebellion, God used the Babylonians to take them captive. And you remember Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those are all happening during the time of captivity. And now God is saying, I'm going to rebuild you. I promise to rebuild you, you see. And that goes to the promise of God. So when God promised Abraham that your seed will continue, it will continue. When God promised David that your seed is going to sit on the throne, guess what? It's going to happen. Now, things are going to happen, but in all of that, God has continued to work. And here, Malachi, we've got a lot of Jewish people who've been exiled. They're coming back. They're striving to get back, if you will, to the old paths and to worship and to, to get the temple worship going back. And there was a great revival. If you read Ezra and Nehemiah, man, these people were excited about the things that God was going to give them. 
But really, what's happening over the years here is that these people have become very, very apathetic towards the Word of God. So here's a burden. God says, I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. And so let's look at here for just a moment. If you go to chapter number three, we're going to be in a couple places here, but chapter three, look with me at verse 12. The Lord says, and all nations shall call you blessed for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. This was a conditional promise and we'll get to that condition here in just a little bit, but I like those phrases, call you blessed. And I like that, uh, a delightsome land. You know what? I don't think it rained all day like it did the other day in a long time. I mean, all day. That was like, it flashed back to my days in Seattle. You know what I mean? It was like, it was like, it was like this all the time. And then this morning, the. Clouds broke and the sunshine started to come through. Oh, man, I just was like, thank you. This is a delightful some place. It was early this morning. I, I walked to church this morning from the house and I thought, oh, it's kind of chilly. Uh, the clouds still kind of whatever. And, and I said, but I love it. Because I believe that the Lord, this is a blessing from the Lord. This delightsome land that I live in on a personal level. So Jerusalem was repopulating this. There were problems, of course. And God was about to deal with these problems. And in verse number one, we see that the of chapter one, the burden is come and And you know what? You know what I noticed that as we read this passage or this chapter, if you study this, you'll find out that these individuals here had no idea they needed the Lord. They had no clue. They were going about their business day in and day out, thinking what they were doing was what God was, was approved of God. And it wasn't. They didn't know that they needed This word from the Lord. Think about John chapter 1 where it says that Jesus was that light. and He came into the world, a dark world, to be that light. And it says that in verse 8 or 10, excuse me, that he came unto his own, but his own received him not, right? So even Jesus, you know, he is the word and he became flesh and dwelt among us. And yet they didn't know that they needed a savior. There was no room in the inn. I mean, when I have people come over, I say, Tracy, get ready. <laughs> So-and-so is coming over. What? Yeah, they're coming over. Hurry. Throw it in the closet. <laughs> then they come in. Oh, should I put my coat? No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me take that for you. Don't open that closet. Because it would be bad. But we prepare. And they didn't prepare. And God was giving his burden, if you will. And what is that burden? Notice verse 2. He says, I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Question. So what's happening is, is God is refuting, if you will, their, what they've been saying. As the nation of Israel, they're saying, you know what? God doesn't love us. And God says, let me tell you what. I do love you. And so one of the things that we have to recognize, if we're going to be blessed after Christmas and we're going to be continuing to let this blessing come down, we have to know that God loves us. These people didn't know that. They said, but ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? And they began to compare themselves with other people like Esau. Jacob and Esau were brothers. Jacob, of course, is Israel. Esau is Edom and all the Edomites and all the all all the Gentiles, if you will. And they all got punished in the captivity. 
And God is explaining that. He says, hey, don't you know that I've loved you, Jacob? I've loved you, Israel. But why? Uh, we, we wouldn't have got sent over into captivity. We would have this hardship. We would have had that. But you know what he said? He says, listen, uh, Edom, Esau got hurt too. But guess what? I promised you that I was going to rebuild you. That's the love. The enduring love. The promise that doesn't change. And so if we come to the place and we want to have these blessings, we have to know God loves us. God loves you. I know it's difficult at times. We have hardships and heartaches, but we have to know that God loves us. Chapter number two, this burden comes in the form of another question. He brings up the priests, verse chapter two, verse one. And now, all ye priests, this commandment is for you. And go down to verse number six. What was going on with the priests? Look at verse six. The law of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lip. He walked with me in peace and equity and did turn many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is a messenger of the Lord of hosts. So this is what the priest was supposed to do. Now look at verse eight. But ye are departed out of the way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. And so the religious leaders, the priests of this day, were supposed to lead them in worship, supposed to lead them in the law. But guess what? They departed. They departed from the word of God, I submit to you. They departed from the word of God, from the covenant of the law, and the heartbeat of the Lord. It's interesting, in chapter number 2, we see that they've departed. They talk a lot about these things. And the Bible says here, in, I think it was in verse 13, where they say one thing, but they come to the altar, and they bow down, and they cry tears, but it means absolutely nothing. These priests were not doing the job that God wanted them to to do what was happening if you go back to chapter number one what was going on in verse number seven at the end of verse six he says oh priests and despise that despise my name there was a they were despising the name of the lord and notice what they say wherein have we despised thy name where do you love me he says first and then now What's going on? When have I ever despised your name? Have you ever talked to people that are just not living in reality? <coughs> and sometimes you try to, you, you say, I can't get through to that person. You ever had that, right? They just won't understand. They're not listening. Now they're listening to the words that are coming out of my mouth, but they're not understanding it and putting it in their heart, right? So here... These people, what they're doing is the priests are despising the very name of the Lord. By verse 7, ye offer polluted bread upon my altar. Verse 8, and if ye offer the blind for sacrifice. So what's going on? So, you know, one of the reasons why Israel was in this predicament was because they did not honor the Lord. They despised the offering. So what was happening? All these people come back. They all coming back. It was a difficult time. I'm sure inflation was high. <laughs> like it is today. And guess what the priests were doing? They were allowing people to sacrifice and bring to the altar things that were not according to the law. They wouldn't bring the best of the flock. They brought the lame of the flock. And the priests, because they were hungry, maybe. The priests, because maybe they were compromised in some way. Because they're just getting along and they're just doing what they're supposed to do and whatever. It become a non-religious, non-spiritual religious experience, if you will. We just go do this. And God said, what you just done 
is you have despised my name. One of the things that we have to make sure that if we want to continue to receive the blessings that we receive on Christmas each and every day is we need to honor the Lord's name. We don't, we, we don't need to be despising the Lord's name. This means that we ought to be truthful and we need to be honest. And if you will, uh, we need to know what the word of God says. Because they were going against the covenant. If you were to read Nehemiah chapter number 13, you would see that Nehemiah had to come and clean house. I mean, uh, he is a picture of of someone that is amazing at administration and getting the job done. He is a great example. But he goes in there and he cleans house. And you know what he does? You see, what's been happening is, is these Jewish people were not allowed to intermarry with other uh, Gentile places because they had gods and they brought gods into their house. People were divorcing and getting remarried and doing all this stuff. And God says, you went, you went, you went contrary to my covenant and I'm not going to bless you. This was a time of desperation. This was a time of leanness. This was a time where if you will, the windows of heaven did not open for these people. If we notice in chapter number three, as we're getting there, the priest despised his name. Chapter three, we see that we get a little prophetic here. And he's talking about when he comes back, he's going to make all things right because they're saying that God is not good and that evil will continue and continue and continue. And God doesn't do anything about it. Let me just tell you what. I'll, I'll tell you this. We live in a fallen world. Sinners will sin. People will disappoint you. And just because we see the sinner elevated or exalted has nothing to do with our God. But these people said, hey, they're excelling. They're doing good. And, 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 and evil is good in the sight of the Lord, he said in verse chapter 17, verse 17, chapter 2. So he says, I'm going to be like a refining fire. I'm going to come and clean house, if you will. And look at verse 7 of chapter 3. Even from the days of your fathers are ye gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return to you, saith the Lord of hosts. But notice what they said. Wherein shall we return? Are they not understanding how serious a predicament the spiritual life is? I think Christians take their spiritual life very lightly. I don't think you should. I think your relationship with the Lord ought to be priority. Amen. I think it ought to be something where you let the very Spirit of God, the Lord Jesus, pulsate in your veins and guide you and direct you and help you throughout the day. Sometimes we're lost. Sometimes we're without hope. We're without direction. Why? Because we are not finding the Lord, if you will. We are not going to Him. And we are not, if you will, returning unto Him. Do you know where to go? Often we go every which way but to the Lord. Say, Pastor, I got a hurt. I got a burden. I understand. And listen, I am there. And I, I love people so much. I will listen till the cows come home. We don't have cows here, do we? No, we don't. Okay. We, but I will listen a long time. But more importantly than having your pastor or your friend or your mama or someone else in your life listen to your burdens, it is paramount that you recognize you need to return to him. You need to take your requests to Him. Take your burdens to Him. You want to be blessed. You want God to bless you. He says, just return to me. Hey, sometimes we think that new thing is going to fix us. You say, well, I want to get a new car. Well, it's twice as much this year as it was last year. How you liking that? (laughs) 
Just return to the Lord. Just return. I'm wondering if we've ever said this, where shall we return? Well, I haven't gone anywhere. Sometimes we feel like the Lord is far from us. I, I submit to you, he's not far from you. You're far from him. You've made steps in the opposite direction of where he wants to take you. And you wonder why it's not Christmas every day. You wonder why the excitement of the Lord's birth and the excitement of the presence and the blessings that we get to focus on during this time are gone the day after or the day after or the day after or two weeks when the credit card bill comes. You wonder why it's over. Listen, we have to return to the Lord. Look at this. In verse 8, brings up a very serious discussion here. Will a man rob God? Remember this, questions and what they're saying. And that what they're saying doesn't match what the Lord says. I think it's always appropriate when we're thinking about uh, what we're going to do in life. Make sure our life matches up with what God says. Amen? And he says... Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? And the Lord says, in tithes and offerings. Notice verse 9. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. So right there we see, remember how the wise men were blessed? They gave a gift. And they were blessed with divine direction. They had a blessing of, I know which direction I'm going. And safety. And providence. Protection. Now, he says, you have robbed me. And because you've robbed me, you know what the the blessing or the punishment, if you will, of you, you are cursed. And so the blessings are coming down. They're not flowing down to you because you've robbed me. We get caught up in all sorts of things. But we can have blessings from God like Christmas every day of the year if we just figure out what to give. If we know what to To give. Look at what he says there in verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. Here is what God is saying. God says, you robbed me. There says, where did we rob you? And God says, well, let me tell you. In tithes and offerings. This is where they robbed God, if you will. You see, the people were neglecting the house of the Lord. It says in verse 10, into the storehouse, in the temple, there was rooms where they would come and store. Every year they would give a tenth of whatever they had, whether the crop or herd or whatever, and they would come and bring that, and they would store it at the temple storehouse so that the priests, the Levites, could be taken care of on a yearly basis because their job was to worship God daily and hourly and provide the sacrifices and provide the daily administrations of the temple and all of that. This was how God provided for these things. But they weren't bringing things into the storehouse. They were bringing in the lame, the blind, those things that were not appropriate to God because they were despising His name. If you will, they were giving him secondhand stuff when he deserves first priority on the very, very best. They were neglecting the house of God. We notice this in chapter 1, verse 6. Look what the Lord says, illustration here. A son honoreth his father. That's what a son should do. And a servant his master. There should honor be there. Notice what he says. If then I be a father, 
where's my honor? He says, if I'm your father, why aren't you honoring me? And if I be a master, where is my fear? You know what he's saying? Where is, I'm telling you what to do and how come you're not doing it? I've given you the word of God. You're not, you're not living by it. I've given you these things. And then they begin to offer. And so I think it would be obedience is a good thing. Because over there in our text there in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, it says, prove there. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. You know what he says? The Lord says, I want you to start giving, tithing and offering. And guess what it's going to do? I'm going to prove that when you do that, that's how the blessings come in your life. I'm going to prove to you. Earlier, I think he says, uh, I am the Lord, verse, verse 6, I am the Lord, I change not. So God's pretty consistent. I appreciate that about him. I'm glad. I'm, I'm not always. I get sidetracked a little bit. I'm glad God is very consistent. And so when we think about this giving, I want to be blessed on a, every day. I want to have the blessings of Christmas like, like we have. Listen, I have to know that God loves me. I have to know that I can't go around. I've got to honor his name. I've got to know that I have to be a giving individual and that I have to prove the Lord in my giving. By obedience, giving the very best, they were giving polluted bread. They were giving the blind the halt. They were giving eh, minimal effort. Minimal effort. What do we got left? This is like a show. This is like, listen, let me encourage you, Christian. This world wants to put you and your faith in some little box that this is where you do it at home and this is what, no, 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 no. You need to make sure that you recognize that your faith is vibrant, it is alive, it is living, and your relationship with the Lord should be paramount in everything that you do and say. And therefore, when we go about our business and we recognize these blessings that come down from God, that we are proving the Lord, we're trusting in it, if you will, and we are giving the very best effort. Have you ever been in a religious service? I have. I want out of there like nothing else. Nothing of God there. Just ritual and rote. Let's not let our faith be like that. You remember, he says, where, where did we rob you in? They had no clue. Or was that just their flesh playing, doing some camouflage for them? You see, they knew the word of God. And God was bringing it down to them. And he says there, If I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. I, I, I think this is a great opportunity to recognize that when we obey God and we give to God like the wise men, we will be blessed with many, many blessings that we cannot even comprehend. And when we give of our tithes and our offerings, like the Lord has asked us to do, okay? When we do that, what happens is, is that he opens up the windows in heaven. Uh, in Genesis chapter, the first time that windows of heaven is mentioned is when uh, God, uh, Noah and his family was on the ark. And the Bible says that God opened up the windows of heaven and it rained. And rain came on the earth. And you know that story, right? And the next time it says that the windows of heaven were closed. This is when the rain stopped. Elijah prayed that rain would not come. And rain, if you will, in the Bible is a picture of God's blessing on that people. Because without the rain, there are no food. There is no crop. There is famine in the land. And so God says, if you would tithe and offering and you would not rob god what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you something i'm going to open up the windows of heaven tracy asked me the other day hey you got any money 
I said, well, she goes, what's in your wallet? I was, well, you know, pull out my wallet. Oh, nothing there. Sorry. You know, she says, oh, what about the rat hole you got? Because I, I, you know, you always got to kind of fold it up and put it somewhere for, you know. Now, listen, she's getting pretty good at asking me and knowing where that stuff's at, okay? But when the windows of heaven open, it's not like asking someone to go into their wallet and try to find the missing piece that they got in there. Because God's, the windows, the rain comes down in a form of blessings. Three individuals... And this wasn't solicited. They shared with me this, that they believe because they were giving and tithing with the blessings that God has given them. They accredited it to the fact that this blessing that I have is because I was faithful in this area of giving. They told me that. I didn't ask that, ask them that. Because it is a amazing principle that when we learn how to be a giving individual... This is how the blessings come. Notice it will be pour out a blessing. And there shall not be room enough to receive it. There's just, it's just overflowing. It's just going to overflow. Now, <clears throat> as we think about this robbing God, look at verse, chap- verse 8 of chapter 3. He says, will a man rob God? Yet he robbed me. Say, where and where he robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. So I want you to think, how do we rob God? Well, we rob in our tithes and our offerings, but really we rob ourselves. We're not doing ourselves any, any, any blessings. We're not giving ourselves anything. We are robbing opportunities to give, opportunities to receive. We're robbing the blessings of God because we're not honoring God in the first place. Then we rob ourselves and we rob other people too. You notice that the promise was that there will not be room enough to receive it. That means that it don't matter. You can't carry one more thing. And guess what? The blessings still come and they fall and somebody else picks them up. So you, robbing God, is robbing God, yourself, and others. I want the blessings to go. I want to receive the blessings every single day. Not just on Christmas. The wise men gave those gifts and they received divine direction. God was challenging these people who were apathetic, who were going through the motions, who were going, doing things not the way that God, and God lovingly was trying to give them the word of God and lovingly saying, Please don't rob me because I want to open up the windows of heaven and I want to bless you and I want you to have all that you need. Notice verse 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall the vine cast your fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord. There's a devourer. There's a devourer here. And oftentimes God will use different things like locusts and pestilence. To come into a situation. And here you are in your own effort. You plant. You seed. You water. And then it grows up. And it's not ready yet. And the devourer comes. You know sometimes this happens. When we do things in our own strength. We build our family. In our own strength. Pretty soon the devourer comes. But what happens when you do it God's way? God says he's going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he says, in your vine, he's going to cast your fruit. It's going to be good. And verse 12, and all nations shall call you blessed. For you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord. Hey, let's not go about our business. Let's go around being blessed. Let's be blessed by being giving. Remember, I said this was a conditional promise. And so if we give and we honor God with the best, not the lame, not the blind, if we do this, we honor God, we follow his word, 
Guess what happens? The windows of heaven will be opened. A lot of, as I study in this, a lot of things happen around windows. We have the ark. The ark there, the flood, all of that stuff going on. The spies, they were let out and escaped, if you will, from the enemy out the window. You remember that? David, when Saul was after him, he escaped out a window, right? Paul was preaching and this guy was sitting in a window and he was long. And the Bible says that he fell down and died. But, you know, Paul let, Paul raised him up. That was good. In a window. Paul was let out of a window and he escaped. Listen, you know what? You can escape these hardships and these uh, uh, discouraging things that happen in life by recognizing God wants to open up the windows of heaven for you. And he wants to pour out a blessing. But in order to receive that blessing, we have to know God is love. We have to honor his name. And we have to make sure, know that it's our job to prove him in our giving. And so it's a good opportunity to commit to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm trusting you in this area. Lord, I want these things or I need these things or this is what I want to accomplish. Guess what? I'm going to prove you. I'm going to honor you in what I have and I'm going to be a giver. Oftentimes, the reason why we're lonely when we get a little bit later in life is because we didn't steward our relationships very well. Maybe it was the environment, the home, the culture of the home where that's what happened, conflict, arguments, all this kinds of stuff. But we didn't do a very good job stewarding our relationships and we always focused on me, 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 how it makes me feel, how what I want, what I want to do. And so we don't spend a lot of time cultivating and stewarding relationships. And so a little bit later in life, we have no one. I'll tell you what, friendship, people, one another is a major blessing. Let me encourage you. Hey, let's honor God and be giving and not selfish in our ways so that we can see these blessings on a daily basis. Let's have a word of prayer today. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the message. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us, Lord, as our desire is to continue to see the blessings that we see this past Christmas. Lord, you're so good to us. You gave your son. Lord, you provide for my salvation. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, uh, so often we may know what the truth is, but we don't see it like you do. And often we say, and we act like we don't know what's going on. But Lord, I pray that you would help us experience these blessings by honoring you. Lord, I'm just wondering if there'd be one that say, you know, preacher, I'm here. You talked about Jesus being born and dying on a cross and being buried and rose again. And I don't know about that. I've never heard the gospel. I don't know what it is. How does it affect me? And, you know, preacher, I like to know more about this gospel. How I could know for sure that if I were to die, I'd go to heaven. You know, I'm wondering if there'd be one that say, you know, preacher, I, I need to be saved today. I need to be saved. Maybe you're here and God's touched your heart in some areas and encouraged you. And you've decided, you know what? I want to continue the blessings of God. I want to, I want to have a blessings every day not just on christmas and i'm gonna honor god in my giving i'm gonna honor god in my my responsibilities and my service i'm gonna honor god in my sacrifices all the things that i give to him i'm gonna honor the lord in those areas how many say preacher that's me the lord spoke to me about something and i'm gonna just i'm gonna do business with the lord today i'm gonna do that all right Lord, bless this invitation. Have your will and way, we pray in your name. Amen. Instruments are going to play. Let's stand together. Spirit of prayer here.
Whatever the Lord talked talk to you about, we have an altar here, your seat, wherever you're at. As she plays, just do business with the Lord. Thanks for kind of attention to the Word of God. We'll see, plan on seeing you tonight, 6 o'clock right here in the auditorium. Hey, make sure you wish Pastor Al Hughes a happy birthday, 70-something today. And uh, he, he, can, uh, he, can, he can go ahead and add those digits up and uh, let you know if he wants to do that. But uh, appreciate him and make sure you say happy birthday to him on the way out. Lord Jesus, we bless it. You dismiss us with your blessings. God and direct us, Lord Jesus. We pray this in your name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, folks. You are dismissed.